All right, I'm back with another video. You probably guessed it already, or of course read the title, but we're gonna go uh, over Yate and Yate BTS again. Real quick, I promise. Uh, what I really wanna get to, and we'll probably have to, I'll do it in a second uh, video because I have some ideas on how I wanna do it, but we're gonna get to a point where we can call out from our handset over the BTS to a real world number. Uh, finally, I just kind of picked this back up recently and was messing around with stuff and um, just stumbled across a, a back end, um, well, a provider basically uh, that is going to enable this to work. Now, there may be others out there, I don't know, but this I just stumbled across and I got it to work. So I'm just sharing it with you all. Uh, of course, if you're going to do anything with um, GSM, BTS, make sure you're doing it in an appropriate area where none of the signals are going to get out and interfere with anything else. Um, as for education, I'm just simply trying to understand as much as I can about uh, cellular, in this case, well, GSM, uh, especially since there's not much GSM here, and it's probably all going to go away soon, supposedly. But... Uh, I've got Dragon OS Focal X up here and running. It's actually on a War Dragon that I do a lot of testing on. And of course, the typical SDR is uh, swapped out with a Blade RF in this case. And uh, in particular, it's a Blade RF XA9. So, other than that, Blade RF XA4 it should be fine. I'm not trying it on any of the older Blade RFs. Probably is fine as well. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to pull down this yate version that you see in front of me and we're just going to basically install it right over top of what's already in dragon i know in dragon was the um is the rc3 yate i honestly i don't i don't really know i don't really think there's any differences on just the yate side between what the blade rf people provided in terms of rc2 versus rc3 i, I could be wrong but i've found this to work so it's should be fine and plus it adds qt5 support that's really the only reason i'm doing it otherwise you could do everything that i'm about to do with uh just dragon os as it is i probably should make that clear all i'm doing is just to show hey we can run qt5 in the uh in the client if for whatever reason you wanted uh, to do that uh, voice over ip client now i've already downloaded I've already did a git clone of the repo that I have up. I'm pretty sure even in this directory. So I've already done that. And if we go within the Yate folder and do an auto reconf, what is it, dash I, I believe it is, and then a dot forward slash configure. And I'm really kind of sharing this too for other people that uh, now, yeah, it is complaining about the Yate config. Not really too concerned with that because I already have a config, uh, you know, those components in Dragon OS. Uh, let me see. So if we did a make, however many cores we have. While that is building, the other key thing here with Dragon OS is because I really didn't want it running by default, is uh, we need to start Apache 2. And so if we do a sudo etsy init.d apache to start, we'll have the Apache service web service up and running. And that's still building in the background. That should mean we should be able to load the uh, localhost NIPC. Let me get this um, HTTPS off there. So localhost NIPC. There you go. I have already added an MZ, and I'll explain that in a second. Let me let me finish this out. So, and we're gonna do a if you if you're following along and you want to replace the eight that's in there because you want to check out uh, the QT5 client. Let's do a sudo make install no API. You're going to see it's probably going to complain at the bottom, but everything should be installed and you should find under internet, you have that Yate VoIP client now. 
which you can mess around with that, but I've not actually found this to work when I configure it the same way I do elsewhere in order to make calls over the uh, the handset. I found that interesting. So we're set up for uh, Yate. If you know, if, I guess if you wanted, and it was the first time doing it. You could do a sudo ld config because there's probably libraries there. You start in here, you either need to, hey, do I want to do like exceptions, uh, reg, uh, ex, reg, uh, I can't even talk. If you want to do like the accepted by reg XP, reg accept. So you, you need to decide in here how you're going to add subscribers. I've shown in the past a couple different ways. Uh, I'm just going to focus on adding an individual subscriber which I've already done um, I just made sure I put the MZ I gave it a MSISDN I just made it up marked active did a KI now because this is a Sysmocom sim actually it was sims I got for 5G um, you know I probably could fill all of this out I just put the little star there like you see uh, and, and ultimately ended up with one entry in there. That's what we're going to use. Country code and SMSC, we'll blow through this. Uh, one little star thing there. I put one for uh, US. Um, I Honestly, I didn't really know the short mes message service center. So I just put that there. BTS configuration. You need to at least set the band and the arson here. I did a PCS 1900. Just put the first at number 512 at uh, 1930 megahertz. I did not mess with attenuation and er anything like that. Other than that, that's pretty much all you need to do to get uh, up and running. I have the Blader F already plugged in. Now, in the past, I've shown where um, in the user source Yate rc3 directory there are some uh, files here that you could load but uh, I've I've found uh, let's see user share now and blader F I have found that uh, what gets loaded what I have set up in Dragon OS it, it seems to be fine maybe you might want to like load these there might be some stability thing there and uh, I'll if I get time I'll, I'll do some comparisons but for this video I'm just going to let the Blader F loaded with uh, the, a firmware uh, image that is actually included in DragonOS, so I know I'm on that 2.4.0. Um, you know, a little little aged, uh, but it's still working fine. Not going to hurt, uh, and who knows, maybe it'll make it better if you load the uh, FPGA with the files that are in that Yate RC3 directory. But at this point, short of just plugging the uh, Blader F in, I'm going to use sudo and start Yate. Now keep in mind, this is going to be like transmitting, so make sure that you take all the precautions that are necessary. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this in front of here a second because it actually is going to show my information as it's connecting to the uh, provider that we're going to talk about later. So I'll come back here. You're probably going to see. Now I have no clock source or anything on, you know, additional to the Blader F. So, you know, may or may not be the, you know, excessive TOA errors. I know I need to read into that a little bit more, but um, we should be good uh, enough to get up here and running with uh, a connection. So. I've already installed SCRC, uh, SCRCPY with a sudo app install but that name of the package right there. And what I'm going to try and do is just get a connection uh, to the phone. And let's see, over, over USB so we can kind of see what's going on. So we're on airplane mode right now. Minimize this. And I guess if we pay attention real close here in the back, we should see 
when I come off <clears throat> of uh, airplane mode you'll get indications over here of a connection now in the past uh, in my testing I had already you know on this Samsung S3 turned on GSM I had already searched out and found the uh, what I wanted to connect to the BTS that I wanted to connect to so I had already made that connection I didn't make any changes uh, crazy on uh, the uh, web front end to make it appear that the BTS is something I already connected to or whatever I didn't do any of that so keep in mind if you want to replicate this you, you got to take all those things into consideration so anyways at this point we're now up to where we have a connection uh, to the BTS and really I just wanted to get to that point just to kind of as a reminder hey this is how you get up to this point I'll close this out with a quick little thing about the um, provider that we're gonna really kind of go through and tie this all together in the next video uh, let me think what else uh, that's probably it here you you know if I had another phone I could text back and forth I could call phone to phone on the same uh, BTS we've already established that and uh, I have sh probably beat that uh, up several times so let me shut this down now let's jump over to what I'm using here that uh, is gonna make these calls work uh, when we get to it this diamond card us uh, I made an account I actually have a master account this is the sub account I'm gonna some of these things are gonna be blurred out but let's log in and main thing is um, it's going to give you an out account ID and a pin code you can add a balance if this was the master account I could add a balance this thing provides uh, several different services and we're going to leverage one of them to configure a, a yate out and then we need to make some changes within the the diamond administration uh, administration center to really get this uh, to work what else um, really there's not a lot here I've not used uh, most anything here because that's another thing to get inbound calls that's gonna be something else I'm gonna have to get to I think that actually is gonna require getting a personal number and doing some <laughs> other configuration I'm just happy I'm able to get a call out um, so really other than that that's I mean make the account um, get get a, a, a small balance on there I think there's a minimum that you may have to put on and you might have to wait a few days for the uh, account probably to just curb any sort of you know whatever um, uh, what would you say uh, uh, automated uh, account signups or spam or you know, whatever it may be um, but after that I've not had an issue waited the time uh, got the um, got the account verified I'm trying to think if there was anything else uh, in that process because I remember some emails back and forth with the support uh, on this particular page I think it was just not understanding I needed to put an account balance on it and wait a few days for things to be verified other than yeah I think that's probably it we'll cut it off here I'll come back if you have got things set up to this point um, give me give me a little while and we'll come back and I'll show the rest of the configuration and I'll line up some uh, individuals that we can uh, call and test this out uh, during the actual video itself so all right thanks for hanging in there and uh, I'll be back with the, the rest of this uh, as soon as possible